All right. Does everyone have their mic turned on? Board members? Push it up, Gail. All right. Say what? Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Yes, this is one of the largest crowds we've had in a while. So I'd like to call to order the King George County School Board regular meeting. At this time, we will uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led today by the Kindness Club from King George Elementary School, followed by a moment of silence. All right, please be seated. Although you, those of you with us from the Kindness Club, would you like to share anything with us or tell us about the words you have on your posters? Hi, thank you. Guys, we have something really fun. These are words that our group came up with to describe kindness at our very first meeting. So these are their words. Kindness is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, those are some really good words. Would, it, would any of you like to share anything else? Tell us about what you do in the Kindness Club. You want to move up to the mic a little can closer? You, yeah, can you come a little closer to the mic and tell us? Um, we do um like projects to help the community and help the world. That's awesome. No. <laughs> I know a lot of people here. Well, it sounds like a great club and we're happy to have you all here this evening. So thank you for coming and sharing this evening with us. Thank you. Thank you guys. All right. At this time we will have, um, we have two recognitions on our, on our agenda this evening. Let me pull one of them up here. Okay. And so first this evening, um, in honor of Bullying Prevention Month, month excuse me, I'm going to share a certificate of recognition. So by virtue of the authority vested in the, by the Constitution of Virginia and the Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, there is hereby officially recognized the Bullying Prevention Month. Whereas school bullying has become an increasingly significant and prevalent problem throughout the Commonwealth and the nation and whereas it is estimated that more than 20% of the United States youth are involved in bullying each year, either as a victim or as an aggressor, and whereas bullying can assume many forms, including verbal, physical, emotional, and cyber, and can happen both on and off school grounds, and whereas it is important for Virginia parents, students, teachers, and school administrators to be aware of and address bullying and to encourage discussion of the problem as a school community. And now, therefore, I, Ralph S. Northam, do hereby recognize October 2021 as Bullying Prevention Month in our Commonwealth of Virginia, and I call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. All right, and next up we have 
uh, some recognition of the Virginia School Counselors Association. Good evening. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Tonight, we have a very special recognition of Mrs. Sarah Ritchie. Uh, Ms. Ritchie, if you wouldn't mind coming forward. Ms. Ritchie um, is a school counselor at King George Elementary School, as you saw this evening. And not only does she fill her days supporting our students with a wide array of needs, she is also active in her school community. She helps with fall beautification projects, supports the PTA, and sponsors an after-school club. We also recognize Mrs. Ritchie tonight for her work with the Virginia School Counselors Association. Mrs. Ritchie serves as the Communications and Public Relations Committee Chair for the organization. She also recently published an article titled, Let's Build Cell Skills and STEM Pathy. And that article is included in your board packet this evening. So thank you, Mrs. Ritchie, for your contributions to King George County Schools and our counseling program. And Mrs. Ritchie is joined tonight with her family and also her administrator, Mr. Sire, and her students and their family. So thank you guys all for being here. All right, thank you, Ms. Ritchie, for all that you do. All right, next we have public and employee comment. Thank you, Ms. Bushrod. All right, so first, uh, first for our public comment this evening, um, I will ask that you please state your name, address, and limit your comment to three minutes in order to afford everyone an opportunity to speak. All right, so first this evening we have John Day. Good, uh, good evening, Chairwoman Gonzalez, Chair School Board members, and Dr. Benson. My name is John Day, and I am the Transportation Coordinator for King George County Schools. I live at 18302 Green Boulevard. Tonight, you'll be deliberating about bus driver pay. I just want to let you know that even though we are short bus drivers, we are not in the same situation as Stafford County, which is providing new drivers a $3,000 sign-up bonus. Because of the sign-up bonus, Stafford County had over 30 applicants who were trained and additional 22 more who are currently in training. If we had those numbers, we would be absolutely overwhelmed. We currently have four applicants who are in the various stages of training right now to become bus drivers. Creating a new pay scale for our current drivers will ensure one, that we can retain our drivers, and two, can provide a living wage, especially for those who are single parent. But please, in your deliberations, do not forget our dedicated monitors who at this time receive as a starting pay $10.54 an hour. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Day. Next, Melissa Brown. Good afternoon. My name is Melissa Brown. I live at 11177 Round Hill Estate Drive. And I'm here tonight to uh, talk to you also about the, the pay that we get as drivers and with the years that we put in. I myself now am a trainer, also a driver for King George County. We have a hard time getting these people in here. And once we do get them in here, we get them trained, pay's not sufficient, they go on. And once they have the Class B CDL, they can go drive a dump truck, a Fred bus, or any other thing that offers them a higher amount of money. Right now, we don't have competitive pay compared to Stafford and Spotsylvania. I do understand that they're bigger counties, but we're gonna start losing air drivers to them with the $3,000 sign-on bonus that most of them are offering. And I looked up in their, um, their paperwork and stuff, and Stafford County at um, 10 years, they're making $27.50 an hour. We're not making that here. We're barely making 19 to $20 an hour at this point. And then even at uh, Spotsylvania, I'm sorry, I have some stuff to give you later, but I only have five copies, but I will make sure that I get a copy to Mr. Benson at the school board office tomorrow. At a 20 year veteran for, um, for Spotsylvania County Schools, 
and it is a seven and a half hour contract a day. For the 20 year veteran, you get $28.60. Where we're not getting that here. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but it does make a big difference when you are single parents, a single income family. And, you know, we, we put dedication into this. I started out on this doing this 22 years ago. My daughter was only three at the time. I only planned to stay until she was old enough to get out of high school. Needless to say, she's 25 now, and I love what I do. I'm with the special needs program, but we seriously need to be brought up to date to where we're at, or we're going to start losing people. That $3,000 sign-on bonus looks really good to a lot of people, and the higher wages, that appeals also as well. Um, also, I would like to bring to the attention that our monitors, like Mr. Day said, are way below any other county. We're starting out at just barely over $10 an hour, and they don't see any room for improvement. Where Stafford's starting out, their monitors at almost $15 an hour. After 10 years being a monitor there, you're getting $20 an hour. And then if you're a 20-year veteran, you're going to bump up to 25, and that's a lot different than we have here. I think at, um, I don't want to quote it wrong, but just to make sure that I'm right. Okay, for our monitor scale here in King George County, a 10-year monitor only gets $11.64, and a 20-year monitor only gets $14.18. Okay. Um, also, um, I know that there's another lady that's going to speak. Thank you, Ms. Brown. I'm sorry, but you're three minutes early. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, Sharice Hands. Three minutes goes fast. I'm going to be quick. Mm -hmm. My name is Sharice Hands. I live at 11350 Pine Hill Road. I've been a bus driver for five years. Um, we work early mornings. We work late evenings. We make out-of-county trips. We're understaffed for extra runs or extra runs need to be made by other people. We have all of our office staff and our mechanics driving buses because we are so short staffed, um, which they should be in the office taking care of us, taking care of the kids, taking care of everybody else, not driving a bus, but we can't get any drivers. We don't make the money to be able to make it appealing for them. We need our monitors. Our monitors are so important to us. Bus drivers need to drive, monitors need to maintain the bus so the driver can do their job, the monitor can make sure that the children are safe, especially on our special needs buses or some of the more difficult routes that we have. Um, we have to clean in between every single run. We have to disinfect and fog our buses every week. We have paperwork. We have to keep track of seats because if a COVID outbreak happens, we have to be able to know who sits where every single day, if they ride, if they don't ride. Um, we have to be able to have all of that information. And these children are our own. When we pick them up, they become our responsibility. They become our children. And they do not become, they do not stop being our children. They get off that bus, they go into school, then we pick them up. We're the first person they see when they get on the bus, they're the person, we're the person that they tell something amazing that happened during the day before they even get home to their parents. And we love that. And you can ask any bus driver that is here today, they are our children the entire time that they are on that bus and we look after them like that. Um, I know other counties are making more money. My son who works at Wendy's as a fry cook is making $3 an hour more than our monitors and he's dipping fries. And our drivers who start out, he's making $3 an hour less than them. So a fry cook is making $13 an hour and you want bus drivers to come and drive for our county and only make 16. And we don't get paid throughout the summertime like a lot of people think, well, you get your summers off, that's all well and good, but we don't. We get paid just like teachers, 180 days that are contracted, it gets divided by 12 months, and that's what get, we get paid. We don't get paid over summertime, just like our teachers. Um, cost of living, most of our bus drivers have to work two, maybe three jobs. Um, and most of us get into it because we have young children, because we want to be there for our kids. We want to watch them grow up. We don't want to leave them with a stranger. We want to be able to take care of them, but also provide to our households. 
So I uh, please encourage you to adjust the payment wage, make it more effective Thank you. and make it more. Thank um, you, Ms. Hands. Mr. Vance, do we have any comment online? One, all right. Hello? Hello? Can you all hear me? Barely hear them. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you. My name is Sean Tipton. I live at 12150 Ridge Road here in King George. And, um, just a few things. I'm going to be brief. Uh, cheers and jeer. Okay, cheers. Miss Strauss and the DECA program. Great job to you guys. Everything you guys are doing is uh, is wonderful. I have a daughter in the DECA program and it works with Miss Strauss all the time. And she's a great leader and a great teacher. And I'm thankful that she's in my daughter's life there at school. Okay, I've been told. Okay, next thing bathrooms at the high school i've been told this is getting better however supplies toilet paper when young ladies are asking each other to please hand a roll between the stalls that's unacceptable feminine hygiene disposal not being done that's just plain nasty and the number of units available this is where my real concern goes because they're having problems with the with kids or that are vandalizing the bathrooms and the entire school's getting punished for it. I've got teachers telling students, my students, that unless you all unless you all figure this out, this is what's gonna happen. So they you know, we all pay taxes. All right. We uh, there's a janitor, there's an SRO. Find out who did it. Make that kid pay. Make his parents pay. Him him or her. It doesn't matter. I mean, stop the mass punishments. That's all I'm asking. And uh, communication. This goes for uh, when I call a school and I ask to speak with a principal about something that they said or clarification of something that came out of their mouth. And I get contacted by an assistant principal. They tell me, well, I believe what principal said was this. And this is what I don't want to hear that. I'm asking. I want to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I want to hear what they said. I want I don't want to hear an interpretation. But I'm told that a principal has not got the time to talk to me because they're taking care of another issue. Fine. Call me back later. It's fine. I don't care. But at least call me back. Don't just brush me off and tell me I don't count. So, in uh, bullying prevention, good luck on that. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. So, at this time, do we have any changes to the agenda? No changes, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So first up this evening, we have our action items on the agenda for consideration this evening. Would we like to make a motion to accept the action items as presented? I'd like to make a motion to accept the action items as presented. Second. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Dr. Benson. We can. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. My Do apologies. Yep. Do each one individually. What was that, Ms. Pence here? Did you want to do each one individually? Yes, we'll do that because we need so, to discuss the employee compensation one. I'm sorry. All right. I'd okay. like to make a motion that we accept the technolo technology advisory committee. Second. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries. Next, we have employee compensation. Dr. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, um, last meeting, or actually the last couple of meetings, you have entertained a discussion uh, and requested that staff do some homework for you regarding a couple of things related to employee compensation. The first was the um, substitute uh, rates. Uh, and in your packet, we have uh, provided for you a document or a table that summarizes our current uh, rate for substitute compensation. Um, we also applied, as you requested last time, we took the $100 as the base for the um, substitute teacher. Uh, it turned out to be a multiplier of 0.33. So we multiplied the other rates um, by 1.33 to apply the same increase uh, relatively to the other substitute positions. And you'll see in the third column there, uh, that 33% increase to all current rates. Uh, the next column was we maintain the 33% increase for the substitutes, um, or we place the highest um, compensation uh, in our in our locality. You know, with those who, with whom we compete most frequently uh, as a recommendation in the right hand column. So you have that information uh, requested, and you also have the, the last column, which then gives you kind of a benchmark against uh, compensation from from neighboring divisions to consider. In doing that chart for you, um, we did discover that uh, in addition to the bus driver salary scale that you wanted to revisit, um, the parapro position scale would probably need to be revisited if you adopted a change to the sub rate for parapro substitutes. Otherwise, a substitute um, could conceivably make uh, more daily than a, a um, a permanent employee in that very same position. Uh, so it was not, uh, we have included the information you requested uh, for bus driver uh, salary scale, uh, those estimated costs. We've also included for parapros uh, just for that reason. It was not meant to pick um, an employee group, but we knew that conflict would exist. It was not meant to exclude, um, uh, as was mentioned tonight, the uh, the monitors or, or any other employee group for that reason. It was simply in response to what we discovered when we um, did the homework for you as far as the uh, the substitute costs. So transitioning then, you see then uh, the table uh, or the, the document that includes the table as far as the um, the bus driver salary scale, revisiting that, revisiting the Parapro salary scale and also looking at a in-year step increase for all employees to include bus drivers uh, and pair pros and monitors and such. Um, so with that said, let me first say this would be a unique um, but certainly welcome uh, initiative for a school board. Never before in my tenure at least have we looked to try to um, utilize fund balance or funds that, that uh, could be discretionary uh, to do this type of thing. Um, I did go back and revisit. Uh, I do estimate that, and again, this is a, um, a current fund balance, and it's attributable. I want to make sure the public understands that this fund balance that we project is attributable to positions uh, that may be currently vacant or filled with the long-term substitute. Uh, it is also attributable to differences between the amount that we budgeted into this year and ultimately the employee we hired to fill that, that position if the compensation was less than was budgeted. We call that breakage or, or lapse money in the case of vacancies. Um, so right now I do believe uh, as requested by the board that we estimate there could be as much as 850,000 that could be available to this board to utilize uh, with the topics that you've presented in previous meetings. So the, so the following table um, below that then lays out for you what you requested. And this took a good bit of work. I want to thank um, our HR department, in particular, um, Ms. Belinda DeShazo and Ms. Sherry Williams, um, Ms. Yazirski, uh, for their work, because there was many hours, you know, going back, recalculating, trying to determine kind of these unique costs. And so the very best of our ability, we have estimated those costs for the different initiatives that you've discussed. Um, and you see there to the right, 
uh, well, first you see the description, and then you see to the right the estimated amount uh, for each of the options that we've um, tried to, to, to frame for your consideration. Um, I'll go back to one thing to consider is that, um, again, I fully support anything we can do uh, to help with compensation and employees. Um, we all need to understand that if, such, if we take such action, um, we do impact or we create a recurring cost that we must address in subsequent budgets. And so we are starting um, next year with an increased cost uh, that we would hope would be supported either through increased funding at the state level uh, or more, more likely a combination of increased funding at the state level and certainly support at the local level. Since in Virginia, school budget funding is a partnership between the state and the locality. Uh, so again, just some things um, for the board to consider that I don't think I've mentioned before. Um, with that outline for you, um, I did uh, look at what I think, you know, we need to consider uh, that these positions from where, from which the, the some of the funds available to you uh, are derived, we will continue to try to fill those, of course, if we have a long-term substitute for a teacher, we will continue to try to fill that with a certified or licensed teacher. So if we're able to do so between now and the end of the year, there could be a little bit of a cost difference, which might affect you know, that 850,000, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's a unique um, opportunity. It's a unique initiative and I applaud the board for um, uh, looking at it and certainly support it. I just want to be, you know, as your superintendent, I want to be prudent um, and not placing us in a position where we're at a deficit come year's end. Um, and so, framing both the funds available to you and then framing the cost, the estimated cost for each of these, um, I think is, is important for your discussion this evening. We, um, as far as the increased cost that may attribu be attributable to sub rates, if you increase those, it's just very difficult um, to estimate that. Yes, there, could, there certainly would be a little bit of an increase there. Um, what I've tried to do is hold in reserve, you know, uh, some funding uh, to make sure we can cover those increased substitute costs should you adopt that rate as well. Um, so it's, it's a, financially it's a picture where we just want to make sure we have the funding to follow through on what the board may decide to do. Um, and in keeping that in mind, then make a recommendation to the board. I did in the packet for the public and for the board, uh, I did uh, recommend that the board look closely at option I. Uh, option I um, would raise the bus driver scale from where it currently is to a starting point of $18 per hour and the pair is to $16 an hour, which would also include a step increase for all employees to include bus drivers and pairs uh, and all employees then beginning in March. And that price tag is $680,000. $782. I've written myself a note because I also want to remind the board that in our previous discussion, uh, we committed to looking at uh, re-engaging in a, a salary study with our competitors locally to make sure that in our FY23 budget, uh, we propose uh, hourly rates and compensation rates that are again competitive uh, and that we've not fallen behind. So everything tonight I wanna make clear is looking to utilize FY22, this current year money, uh, with an eye towards developing a budget for FY23 that may very well increase um, you know, base salary scale numbers, um, but it'll be done at a time where we can plan for that cost and then seek the support of state and local funding to fulfill those costs in FY23. Um, so I'm happy to answer questions or to engage with you in your discussion, um, do additional research as you need, as you consider this. Um, but again, I want to thank staff for, for doing the homework for you and preparing it for your consideration, and I'll leave it at that. All right. Thank you, Dr. Renson. So this time, do any of my colleagues have questions for Dr. Renson? Ms. Pansier, would you like to begin? I'll pass at the moment. Okay. Ms. Hoff? Um, no, I, I do appreciate your eye towards sustainability. Um, we, we want to do every, everything we can at the moment 
because we are in a crisis and we realize that. But, but we also want to make it sustainable so that you don't go backwards at some point because our budget won't support it. So I mean, we've got to have an eye for the future. Um, if, you know, frankly, we need to say to our county and to our local government that, that our employees are worth every penny. And if that means a, a tax increase, then that's what it's gonna mean. Thank you, Ms. Hawk. Dr. Cartwright. Yes, I also agree that sustainability is very important um, in the upcoming years. And I know how hard bus drivers work. And as I said in the last meeting, we need to make sure that you are compensated um, as well as other businesses in the area. And you are responsible for all of our children as someone mentioned a few minutes ago, and it's a very important job, and we understand that. And we know that it's a challenging job as well. We know there are shortages in the United States. We know there's shortages of bus drivers in this area as well. And with that being said, um, I think sustainability is very important. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins. How much is the budget amount for substitutes for this current year? I'm trying to go from memory. Um, I'd really like to reference the budget document itself offhand for that line item, but I, I think I think we have a hundred and I want to say one twenty five. But if you'd allow me, you know, that's, again, that's just, I'm recollecting from back in March when we were developing the budget. I'd be happy to get you the actual number, though. How much, uh, how much would it cost for the increase? That's what's, uh, for the substitutes, if we would increase the rates, that's what's difficult to estimate. We just don't we have, have any. A low ball and a high ball. Don't know, because it's really predicated on sub usage. Um, and we're in unique times. Um, I do think that if we were to at least reserve, you know, 100,000, I think we could cover any increased sub costs. Another factor that became difficult is if we were to fill, uh, you know, a long-term long -term substitute position, then of course that would affect the sub costs, but it would, but it would also affect, instead it would affect the, the personnel costs. I understand. How many um, bus monitors are there? Mr. Day. Does every bus have a monitor? No, ma'am. Okay. How many bus monitors? So. 15, John, is that what you? 15. 15, and is that, are they included in this? They, they are not, and they were not excluded though. I wanna make that clear. We were simply, we were focused on bus drivers given the board's previous discussion. The parapros came up just as a result of the, um, the obvious discrepancy in terms of the sub rates for that position. So I want to make that very clear. We didn't exclude any employee group or didn't intentionally exclude. We simply included those the board discussed and the one that we discovered would be problematic with regard to the sub rates. So the bus monitor is not identified as a, a pair of pro, is that no, correct? What's the, what's the um, monitor's salary? 1054. We need to fix that. Uh, I apologize to all the bus monitors out there. I know um, that they are out there. Um, and I'm sorry that we forgot about you, but uh, you do have a very important job, um, like it was explained up here, and, and I honestly had no idea that the salary was that that low. So um, I would, I would um, make a motion. So fast. Um, I cost of drivers is 18 pairs at 16 with a step increase for all employees starting in March for a total cost of 680,782 along with option number C for the 33% increase to all substitutes at the current rate from um, 75 to 100 in the beginning and then all the way up in that column and also um, raise the bus monitors pay to be in step with the 
um, bus drivers increase. Mr. Collins, could we simplify that motion and walk through it item by item? I didn't follow, the, couldn't catch some of that. I make a motion to pay for the cost of drivers at $18 an hour starting, pairs at 16, with a step increase for all employees starting in March. And can we start with that? That's the first part. Let's do that first motion. No, I have a, we'll it's a one motion. So can I finish? Do you need me to repeat the motion? I, it, it's, it's, I, I'd like to hear the second part of his motion because I'm a little confused. If we're going to separate it out, I don't know that I want to vote on the first motion without understanding the second motion. Because are you saying C on this list? I'm saying I on the list, and I'm saying C on the substitute pay rate. Final first, C. second, third column. It goes 100, 100, okay. 120, 186, 206, 226, and 100. And then oh, you're, okay, you're raise calling the bus monitor's pay to be in step with the the um, bus driver's pay. So what, what their increase will be, will be the bus drop monitor's increase. The percentage I, I just wanted to make sure you weren't talking about C on this second. No, it's talking about I. Making confusion, okay. I, I'm not trying to be difficult. I feel like we could separate it out and have the conversation and it would be easier to process. Um, nevertheless, so. So a motion to Except option I, option I for bus driver and employee salary adjustments. And you are saying the third column, the board request 33% increase to all current rates. So Cost of driver at 18, pairs at 16 with a step increase for all. In no, no, I know, I know, Mr. Collins. So the second part of your motion was? Third column. The third column, the board, in the substitute pay rates, it was the board request 33% increase to all current rates? Yes. Okay, hold on. So may I make a suggestion that we only vote on one at each time so we can discuss the bus rates and then we can that, discuss the substitute rates separately. So when we're trying to talk about both of them, we're not getting that committed. is precisely what I was advocating Thank for. Thank you. All right. Well, there's still a motion on the table. Do we have a second? I second that motion. All right. Any so, so I, I think I just yeah I think the discussion here. item is so um, Mr. Collins you had mentioned that the bus monitors pay would increase based on the percentage the same percentage that the bus drivers rate was increased so if we went yes. from 15 and change to 18 and change whatever that percentage is it would go for the to the 10 percent or the 10 dollars I'm sorry from the 1054 to the same percentage rate the same as the bus percentage. drivers. So the 33% increase. I don't believe it's a 30% increase for the bus drivers. What was the percentage of increase for the bus bus drivers pay? Do we know that? I ha I'd have to calculate okay. the 15. Um, what is the, the amount? I got to calculate right here. So the starting salary would be $18 an hour, but then in March, you get the, the step increase, which would raise that okay, are, starting pay. What's the current okay. bus rate starting salary? Per hour. So, for the purposes of the motion, Mr. Collins, what is your your bus monitor proposal from ten from the ten dollars and fifty eight cents? Ten fifty four. And you want the same percentage increases the same bus drivers. Percentage increases the drivers. Okay. That's only a thirteen percent increase. Okay. So, I okay. Um, so I have a. Question, couple questions, Dr. Benson. All right, so Dr. Benson, in your chart about the, the salary adjustment costs with your different options, so you've broken out the costs from November to February and from January to February, and then your options, the proposed options at the bottom are just for the, the drivers, the pairs, and the step increase for all employees. Is that starting in November or starting in January? But you're referencing it, like option I? Yes. Would begin in March with the March paycheck. Oh, okay, so there would not be an increase now for drivers or pairs, it would wait until March. It would all start in March. However, 
you know, we would be developing it, but the, the, the increase to the scale uh, would be added, you'd have the increase, but then you'd also have a step increase. So it would be more than 18 um, in terms of the net earnings. You know, it's going to be. Okay. So, so my understanding is that the $18 an hour and the $16 would be um, immediate. And then that's the not what this increase, says. Right. That, that, this is a kind of confusing. With, I mean, with a step increase for all employees starting March. That's what it says. Right. So that's why I thought we should discuss this and break up the motion. So back to the so Dr. Benson. So your other options like cost from November to February for increasing bus driver salaries and para scales. So those were presuming we. But, so is this kind of like a we could have also picked like a a la carte item here. You're correct that if you chose to the option I in terms of the um, the step increase for all employees and the raise uh, at that time for the drivers, if you chose to do the drivers and the pairs earlier, then you would go up to, um, if you wanted to begin in November, you'd have to add the amounts for letter C yep. and letter F. No, right. So okay. we'd add I, so, F, I think, and I A. E. I think it's E. It'd be like A, E, and I to start yes. now and then give a step increase for all employees in March. So that a would and I. total like, that would be well above the 680. Yes, I mean, unfortunately, that's just that's yes, cost prohib prohibitive to you. Right. I just wanted to make it available. Yeah, I want to make sure everyone understood that that was what this was because I, I also was thinking that the increase was sooner than March. Um, okay, I understand that. The, so if I can help though, mm -hmm, letter so, I. In other words, you would have no one making $18 as a driver or $16. Everyone then in March would move a step. So even those on step one currently would move to step two. Does that make sense? And would so there would be nobody earning the base amount from March to the end of the year. Everybody would be step two or higher because you're moving all employees uh, a step within the year. So there would be like on paper, the the hourly rates would be increased to 18 and 16, and then everyone would get a step increase. So the rates would actually be higher than the 18 and the 16. Correct. You're, these are just adjustments drivers. to their scales. Yes. These are not the actual adjustments to you know the the, the yes. change in the scale will of course impact uh, then folks so compensation. Understood. Um, so I, I don't understand if we pick A and E, which gives them an a increase from November to February, what happens in March? What is their salary? They what is, a, they would move the step. They would March. move a step. Correct. What is what is the cost so, for the sorry, Ms. I'm, Smith, yeah. I'm sorry. So I don't I don't understand the math then because what you're saying is in order for them to maintain sustainability, we have to look at this I, which is a 680, 782, because if we were to say we wanted to go A and E, I is an automatic. I is going to happen no matter what, is it? Am I misunderstanding that? You no, know, you would need to add the cost for A and E to the cost for I. So A and E is not sustainable without I. Would, no, if not. you were to if you were to combine all three of those as far as a cost, just add those three costs together, then you would exceed the amount available in terms of fund balance. That's correct. So it'd be closer to a million dollars. And what is the March? Why is March the magical month? That was just where we we tried to calculate it in terms of uh, affordability, but make the step as soon as we could. So while February's cost was was a little too much, March's was kind of in the sweet spot where we could do the step for everybody. Um, and address, you know, with an eye towards the substitute rates that you'll, you'll visit as well to make sure that those are affordable as well. Again, it's a, it's a unique, um, it's a good thing. It's just unique and it's, it's something that a school board here, at least to my knowledge, has not um, looked to engineer, that's all. And so, it's it's we want to do as much as we can. We just have to do it within, I think, the checkbook available to you in this fiscal year. Given there's you, know, you have an opportunity coming up to build a budget for FY23 that could revisit these rates further. That could revisit all employees' rates, um, all employee groups, and I, I anticipate that's what we'll want to do. So, but you can't bring them down 
All right, so you can't give somebody hold on, Mr. Paper. Collins, well, Ms. Pansier. Yeah, let me just, so is there, all right, so we just heard that they are having to do more because of COVID. So is there any way that we could get them the A and the E under any of our COVID funds so that they could actually get that pay increase starting in November and then we would start them on their step increase in March? I'd have to check. I'd have to check the regulations regarding ESSER funding and whether that would qualify as an expense. Um, I do think, and, and I'll share uh, that, you know, with kind of the question mark as far as the sub rates, and I understand what the board wants to do. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, column C scares me a little bit, quite frankly, in terms of cost, because it is hard to estimate. That's why we created that column D uh, to make sure that we were paying um, the very mm -hmm. same as the most, as the highest paying in our locality as a recommendation to you. But no, we could. I said column A and I'm sorry, excuse me. I said column A and column E, but, which right. is just getting them from November to February. Uh, he was talking about the pay. I, I, was I was just don't looking know where C comes from. At column at the fourth column on the substitute pay raise, because the two are. Oh, that column. Okay. Yeah, the two are certainly um, hinged together in terms of total cost, and and looking at you know the current year's checkbook and what's doable. Um, as a strategy, and again, I've. I've tried to think this thing through, we could, as a contingency, um, should costs that this board wants to incur and, and do in terms of compensation, should that run as close to um, a zero balance or even, even under zero, we would then need to revisit potential positions in our school division that for the year could have been or change the funding to ESSER um, to make sure that we, of course, don't end the year in a deficit. So, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to share openly and be as transparent about my thinking, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to manage this budget to accommodate as best we can um, and certainly support what the board is aiming to do, but also kind of uh, frame for you the, the reality of funds that are available, um, given they are finite, you know, within as far as our operating budget. What we would do then if if those funds were exhausted because of actions we took mid-year, what we would might might have to do as a backup in terms of looking at, at ways for ESSER to be utilized for qualifying experience expenses. And I just don't know if that one in particular would be a qualifying expense, but we could search for others that may very well be. So Dr. Benson, from a sustainability standpoint, so I appreciate that you gave put in here the um, the estimated fund balance of the 850K. Do you, do you have any idea how that compares, generally speaking, to fund balances of previous years? Like, is that on par with what we typically expect, meaning it would have be more inclined to be sustainable moving forward, or is that like an anomaly? It's way higher than it usually is? It's slightly higher in my experience. Um, we usually look around maybe 600, 500 to 600. So it is slightly higher, which is not surprising, given that we you know, it's been more difficult certainly this year to fill positions and consequently then uh, we're experiencing a little bit more of projected fund balance for the end of the fiscal year. Okay, and the, and so the, um, the substitute pay rate table. So I, the, I guess I would I understand that we have a motion about the, the third column, which is the 33% increase to all current rates. I'm in favor of the recommended one that actually of say the seven positions that we're looking at, it actually increases, well, it increases all of them, but it actually is higher, pays higher hourly rates for some of the positions than the 33% increase did in column C. So I'm in favor of the recommendations. Um, did we just go to the substitute pay? What was that? Did you just go to the substitute pay? I did. I, I'm okay. All right. So, do we have any further discussion? Yeah, I don't think we're ready to close this gap. I agree. So, first, let's can we just agree that we're going to separate the motion? And I, I'd like to amend the motion. No, I don't want first to the motion. motion. Just a minute. Just we first, a second, okay. vote on it. Yeah. We can, we can make your own motion. Collins, okay, I'm, we can propose to amend the motion. So it's it's getting really confusing because we're talking about two different pay scales here, and you know we just need to separate them out. So all I'd like to do is just amend the motion so that we separate out 
the bus driver and employee salary adjustment cost, and then we will make another motion to accept the substitute pay rate. You have to you have to vote on the main motion. Okay, so let's take a vote. If you want, you know, I don't know why we can't amend it, but we can amend it. You can vote on his. Yes, Let's vote on it. Yes. Okay, we'll vote on the original motion, which was to approve option I for the bus driver and employee salary adjustments. The third column of the substitute pay scale, the, the substitute pay rates, and to raise the bus monitor hourly rate from $10.54 by the same percentage as the increase for the bus driver scale. Which on, I just want everybody to realize at the dollar and 13 cents. So they'll get eleven dollars and thirteen cents. Right. Understand. All right. All in favor of this motion as stated. Yay. Aye. All opposed? Nay. I, I don't think we're done discussing. We're not discussing. Yeah, I agree with Ms. Cantier. I still have more questions. So we can make another motion. Is it yay or Just, nay? Is it yay or nay, Gail? Ms. Hawk? Nay. Nay. Chair votes nay. Motion carries. No. Would anyone like? No, motion does not carry. Motion. motion does not carry. I apologize. Would anyone like to make? I would like to make a motion for uh, the requested bus driver and employee salary adjustment cost only to accept uh, I and also include a three dollar increase for the bus monitors. So it would be the drivers at 18, the pair is at 16, the bus monitors at 13 with step increase for all employees starting in March. We have a second. Second. All right, any discussion? So I just, I, I have a question. Okay, ahead, so I did the math just real quick, $3 an hour, I heard 15 bus monitors, I heard 180 days, seven and a half hours. I did the math, it's roughly, Sixty thousand dollars. Is that correct? Is that the same? Is it close? Well, uh, you would need to know where those fifteen monitors fall currently on, on the scale. scale, right? To do the, you know, they're not all making that same base amount. That that's correct. But we're increasing them by three dollars typically. So if it goes from ten to thirteen, and we went from fifteen to eighteen, so the percentage rate is the same. So I'm thinking that just basic. I just want to make sure that we're not going from you know, 600 and, put my glasses back on, 680,000 and we're adding another 500,000 by some crazy, no, 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 you're not you know, right. I just want to make sure that I did the math right. And I know it's not perfect, but at least I know that we're not talking in an extremely amount of money no. that we're going to far exceed our 850. I, th I think it's reason. I think it's, it's reasonable. It's reasonable within the confines of the existing fund balance. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? And, and let's clarify that uh, that those 18, 16, and 13 would then have a step increase in March. Yes, that's right. under but, I. But to be clear, none of this, will, none of that increase would start until March. Correct, right. Dr. Benson? <laughs> the increase will start until, until March, March, but then it will be increased in March. And Dr. Benson is going to see if we can possibly use any CARES funds. funding, COVID funding, whatever we're before calling then. it right. to do to something that, until yes. then. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I don't, I, I need clarification there as far as doing something until then. The, the, what my comments about the use of um, SR3 or CARES money would be as a contingency should these salary increases cause our, our current year's budget to come closer to go to deficit. Understand, yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I assume that everyone knows that we are not allowed to have a deficit budget. That's not permissible. Correct. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries. All right. Did you want to do anything with substitute? What was that? Substitute. Yes. Would we like to make, or do you want to talk about them first? What do you said? Would we like to make a motion um, pertaining to the substitute pay rate table? Okay. I'd like to make a motion for the third option, 33% increase to all current rates. Do we have a second? I'm sorry, was there a second? I'll second. All right, any discussion? So I, I 
Yeah, I, I, I would like to make some minor changes, I guess. So, you know, the high school diploma and the associate's degree is the same. And then, um, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like to take, and this is just, you know, me just kind of trying to make things adjustable based on experience um, and still try to keep things in, in line. But, um, you know, if we could increase the associates to maybe the 105, I, I think the bachelor's grade 120 is sufficient. I think that, um, you know, the long-term sub would be more equivalent to the 158 and then possibly the long-term to 186 and then reduce the long-term licensed teacher to 211 and then the pair substitute at 100. Um, as far as sustainability and then now that we just added, you know, um, the bus monitors, I just think if we made those couple minor changes that this, the increases in each level as we move up um, is a little bit more uh, favorable. So that was a discussion. Um, would, would we like to amend the motion or is there further discussion? I'm in favor, I personally am in favor of the recommended budget, but perhaps with some of the changes that Ms. Pansiera uh, mentioned, so. So can I repeat those numbers in column C and if yes, everybody can write do. them down? Yep, I'm gonna write them down. See if everybody's in agreement. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a uh, high school diploma equivalent would be 100, the associates would be 105. Hold on, that, hold on, hold on. Okay. So associates, 105. 105. Bachelors, masters, masters. and doctorate would be 120. The long term um, sub Sorry, would, be would be what? 120. 120. Long term. Long term would be 158. 158. And then the, the long, -term long term four year four degree year. would be 186. Hold on, four year, 186. The long term licensed teacher would be 211. And then the para substitute would be 100. 211, para sub, what was that one? One, 100. 100. 100. And long-term license would be? 211. 211. 211. So, that makes sense. call the question. Hold on. Well, I'm thinking. Madam Chair. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. This is weird. Are deliberating, it's unfortunately not a question and answer session. Here's some. All right, is there any further question or comment? So, would we like to propose amending to the amounts that Ms. Pansier recommended, or would we like to vote on the original motion? Main motions on the table. All right, all in favor? Aye. So, I, 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 can I ask a question? So yes. I, I know we don't have formal bylaws and Robert's rules and so forth and so on. And in the past, Mr. Collins, we've amended motions. So now yeah. you seem to be opposed to amending motions. So no, I'm not is, opposed to amend the motions if I agree on the amendment, but if the okay. main motion is called uh, Our, and it's properly seconded, and then it goes through discussion and then it, mu it must be voted on. Uh, okay, so Mr. Collins? You are one of five board members. Ms. Pansiero, would you like to amend the motion? I would like to amend the motion. I object. Without his permission, you would vote on his motion. Then if it failed, then you could propose a new motion. We can. Okay, so let's vote on it. All right, Not all in favor. Fail his motion Aye. And then redo your motion. Yeah. All opposed? Nay. Nay. Let's get right. Nay. Chair votes nay. Motion dies. Would we like to make another motion? I'd like to make a motion that we accept uh, item C of the substitute pay raise uh, as follows. Uh, high school diploma equivalent 100, associate's uh, degree 105, uh, the bachelor's master's doctorate at 120, the long-term sub um, at 158, the long-term four-year degree at 186, 
the long-term licensed teacher at 211, and the parish substitute at 100. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries. All right. Ms. Gonzalez, can we address the question that was presented during our deliberation? Sorry, which question? Certainly. From the audience. Yes, we may. Uh, sir, so I just would like to go ahead and answer that. And um, based on what the motion was, yes, the uh, step increase and the pay increase will not begin until March. Uh, we did have a discussion, however, to see if there's some other way that we could uh, use some of other funding so that we can supplement something somehow until then. Yeah, certainly. All right, moving on. Next, we have our policy manual updates, which were reviewed at our last meeting. Do we have a motion to approve the policy manual updates listed? You're welcome. Thank you. I'd like Thank to you. make Thank a motion coming. to agree, uh, to approve the policy manual updates as, as presented. Do we have a second? second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion carries. On to our information items. Um, do we have any committee reports this evening? Ms. Pansiero? I do not. Ms. Hawk? No, ma'am. Dr. Cartwright? No, ma'am. Mr. Collins? No. I do not have any committee reports either. Now we have a human resources update. Dr. Benson? Please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ms. Zierski is coming up. She's prepared for you an update. Um, in response, I think, to discussion you had um, at a previous meeting. Uh, so I appreciate her kind of pulling double duty, doing helping with the homework for what you just discussed, and then also putting this together um, just to, in response to some of your questions. I also want to do kind of early thank Ms. Yazierski and um, Mr. Shazo, I assume, perhaps Lindsay, those that came to the Fall Festival and spent their Saturday um, uh, helping us to attract um, potential employees by setting up a booth at the Fall Festival. So thank you, Ms. Zierski and your staff members for going above and beyond that day. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Can, is this? Yes. It is working. On. Thank you. Let me, I'd just like to start off by saying thank you all for the salary, the compensation increases that you just voted on. I think those will go a long way to help motivate our employees in the next few months, especially as we enter the recruiting season. Um, I have provided a staffing update. It was in your packet for you. And if you look at the picture on the very first, ooh, Mr. Lance, can I go back just a sec? Um, that picture on that very first page is of our booth at the Fall Festival this past Saturday. And I would like to thank Ms. Helena Fedak, Ms. Angie Harris, and Ms. Christy Cowan, who is not in this picture, but I appreciate them coming out and helping with the recruitment booth on Saturday at the Fall Festival. And I'll talk a little bit about that. I was there. I recruited for you. Yes, you did, Mr. Collins. And we thank you for those volunteers that you recruited for us. Thank you. Thank you. You came over to our booth many times and recruited some candy for yourself, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I also brought over how many people? I think you brought about seven or eight volunteers over and we appreciate, we appreciate that. We appreciate everything you all do for us. So again, the purpose of this presentation is to, to update you on what we have done and we have been busy since the last update at our meeting on September the 20th. And now Mr. Vance, if you wouldn't mind advancing the slides. I'm not gonna read over all of these for you, but these are some of the positions we have filled since our last update on September 20th. I'm also pleased to say that today we have added two more to this list. Um, we added another pair of professional at King George L. Oh, well, hopefully you all will be approving those this evening, but we do have another pair of professional at King George Elementary that we will be adding. And we also have an, an additional para at Potomac Elementary School that we will be adding. Down on that bottom block, the division under division, um, I'm gonna talk about substitutes in just a minute, but I wanna let you know, I wanna fill you in on our contact tracers. 
We had over 55 applicants for the contact tracing position. Um, as of today, our goal was to, to, to hire 10. We actually have worked with even um, some of our current employees who ha are going to volunteer. To, well, they have expressed interest in helping with the contact tracing in the evenings and on Saturdays. So we have 18 contact tracers and 15 of them are ready to go. We're just waiting on some background checks for a few of them. And the training for that will begin next week. Ms. Fisher is ready to start that next week. So we are very lucky to have that up and running. Can I interject real quick, just to make sure everybody's clear. The, um, these contact tracing positions, um, we, like all divisions in Virginia, have access now um, to what is called a VISTA grant. And those are funds above and beyond that we can, uh, that will be reimbursed to us um, for costs associated with some contact tracing and some other uh, testing that we may soon be able to set up with a, a, an external vendor to help our families who may need either diagnostic testing or who may want to participate in pool testing uh, as another layer to try to help our schools. So I just wanted to clarify, this is not an operating budget expense. This is a grant program. Uh, and we're, we're certainly happy that the, um, the grant is, is there. It's, it's available, it's not a competitive grant, it's available for all school divisions in Virginia. Um, and we're happy to utilize it certainly to, to help us conduct school in a safe manner and to provide a service for our community and staff. So thanks for letting me interject. No, that. That's perfectly, perfectly fine. Our next slide is just an update on substitutes. Um, I have nine names for you all this evening on our personnel recommendations. We have a processing date scheduled for next Wednesday, October the 20th. Um, we have eight more subs to be processed next Wednesday. Uh, I think we already have three that have signed up for the November 4th processing date. Our October substitute job posting that is on our website at this point from October the 1st until today, that actually the number when I submitted the packet was seven, that has gone up to eight as of today. And I, as I said earlier, um, the fall festival on Saturday, we actually were able to talk to about seven or eight people who may be possibly interested in subbing. Um, we have worked this week to reach out to them and encourage them to fill out the application and get them in. We have seven to eight substitute classroom teacher substitutes, but also two nurse substitutes that we were able to talk to on Saturday. The next slide, just real quickly, I just wanted to share a little bit with you about some, some of our recruiting data. Our KGCS website, when we recruit, um, I'm, those of you who have known me for a while know that I like data. Um, I'm always looking at well, what, what's effective and what's, what's not working. Um, our website, when our application actually asks applicants, well, how did you find out about us? Where did you hear about us? And the statistics from our, our recruiting or our application site, we have 1,407 of our applicants say they found out about a job posting on our website. 704 of them responded that they found out about us at a job fair. Um, 108 said they found out about us through an advertisement. And then there are an, of the other category, we have 873 and other includes social media, um, employee referrals. And, and with that, I remember doing some data for you all a few years ago, and we looked specifically back in 2016, 17 at our 48 professional staff members we hired that year. And we specifically asked them at orientation that summer, where did you find out about King George County Schools? And I still have my little chart from 2016, 17 that I dug out of my file. And at that time, out of those 48 professional hires, 13 of them, which was our highest number, were referred by current employees to apply with our school system. Um, the next 12 came off of the KG website, and then 11 of them were from the Fredericksburg Regional Job Fair. I'm, I'm happy to say that the job fairs are starting back up Monday, so we will be out at job fairs and recruiting through some of our job fairs. Next slide, please. So what have we been doing? Like I said, we have been very busy. 
And I, there are so many people that I probably need to thank. Um, I'd like to thank Ms. Higgins, who has been helping us. Um, I know today, Mr. Um, Gary Cliff was out putting up some of our signs. And I have brought for each of you tonight, one of these lovely signs that I'd like for you to take to you can decide where you'd like to place it any place in this county. <laughs> um, I have one for each of you. For the can I put it on school property? I've already done all the school property, so those are taken. Um, but wherever, wherever you can find. And I was, I was excited to see some of them in front of the high school this evening. But we are posting these in um, the, the community. We also took out a half-page ad in the, um, it's the King George Colonial Beach Dalrin local guide that will be coming out it's the it's the fall 2021 edition that reaches 17,000 homes so that sh if it hasn't come out I don't think it has come out yet but I think that will be reaching 17,000 homes in those three areas in the next couple of weeks job fairs like I said we are starting the job fair trail on Monday um, Slippery Rock is a school that we always have a lot of luck with in Pennsylvania, um, we are going to Penn State, and then VASPA, which is in Harrisonburg, Virginia, the first week of November. In case you don't know, it's VASPA is the Virginia Association of School Personnel Administrators, and we have had much luck there in the past recruiting um, future candidates for teaching positions. As far as the community goes, as I stated, we were at the King George Fall Festival last weekend. Um, it was a grand time. We had a great time and had a lot of fun talking to people. The other thing we've been doing, if any of you have been to football games, we have asked our athletic directors at both the middle school and the high school to pass out these cards, have them available for people when they come in to purchase tickets or at the concession stand, and they have obliged and helped us with that. So we are trying to reach out to, to them as well. Next slide, please. And Ms. Higgins is, Amanda, can I do my two and then, okay. Ms. Higgins is going to talk to you about some digital marketing um, that we have been researching. Job postings, again, the substitute posting is continuous. We will continue that throughout the year. Postings for 22-23 school year, we typically post those in, in, in January, and it's a generic posting for elementary teachers, secondary teachers, elementary special education, secondary special education. We will bump that up to December this year. And ongoing, one of the things that we have not quite been able to get to yet in this past three weeks is we do need to find a contact at Dalvin that can help us at MWR post, post down there that we are hiring. And if, if we can find someone with that, we will, we will talk with someone there. The, um, again, as Dr. Benson alluded to this evening, the salary discussion will have to be thought about as we go into this next budget process and in any incentives also would need to be a part of the 22-23 budget process and I'm going to let at this time May Amanda if you would come speak about the digital marketing. Thanks, Ms. Zuzerski. Oh, I'm not as tall as she is. Um, <laughs> we did reach out to six different firms in the Fredericksburg area, digital marketing firms, and that's their specialty. From those six, we actually scheduled two discovery calls to meet with the professionals about the services they offer. And from that, we filtered down to one firm that actually gave us a proposal for what they could do for us um, in terms of digital marketing. So kind of how they broke it down was they would offer social media advertising for us on major platforms, um, as well as website statistics using Google Analytics. And the fee for that is $3,000 per month and a six month commitment to the firm. So that was some of the investigation process we did um, just in using digital marketing as an additional tool for recruiting measures. And I was also going to update that we also um, looked at trademarking for the different King George logos that we have. We've selected three images that we use most often in King George County Schools. Um, I do have samples of them, but it's the blue and yellow KG that's on the we're hiring signs, that symbol, as well as a little square that says King George County Schools with that blue and gold KG above it and then our interlocking yellow KG that we find on athletics. 
So those are the three logos that we've um, been working with. And the fee for those would be $30 per image to register them. And then it's an annual $30 fee for each logo as well. So we've been working on that um, as part of the marketing process as well. All right, thank you, Ms. Higgins, Ms. Uzerski. Dr. Benson, anything else to add? Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So the $3,000 a month for a minimum of a six month commitment is, you know, it seems high to me, but I don't know. You know, just, did you get pricing from other vendors as well? Is that a norm or did you just choose this vendor because they were able to give us the services that we were wanting? This vendor was the most easily accessible in terms of our investigation and meeting with people. Um, so it is the only price point we have, but in doing a little bit more research that is about on par with other agencies as well. So I would say that's average. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We would have to, if we pursued it, we would have to, given the cumulative costs or the aggregate costs, we'd have to go through a bid process. So we'd have to open it up. Even though it's less than 50K? I thought 50K was the, the cutoff for that. Oh, the 50K is, is what I'm authorized to approve. So that's my threshold as your superintendent. The, the, if it purchases, I think over $5,000, we collect phone bids or we have, okay. we allow companies to bid on that business. Any further questions or comments? Ms. Hoff? No. Dr. Cartwright? I just want to personally thank you for all the work you've done and uh, just want to congratulate you on a job well done. Mr. Collins. All right, I have no questions either, but thank you both for the information. And it's a lot of hard work you both put in. So it's very much appreciated. All right, next we have our Honeywell ionization system update, Dr. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, today, Honeywell, excuse me. Today, Honeywell came out with their equipment and visited all of our schools, um, including the, uh, the preschool. Um, and I asked them to, to answer you all, a question that you all asked about, we need some assurance that the ionization systems are performing uh, as promised. And they have provided me with the data from each school or each location. I asked them to sample two classroom type spaces and to also sample an ancillary type space, a gym or a cafeteria, one of those larger spaces. Um, and so in between our earlier meetings and getting over here to the middle school, I have that data from them today. Uh, I'll assemble it and I'll send it to you tomorrow. Good. And I will also have it posted for our public um, as a handout for this board meeting so they can access it. But I can tell you, I called Ms. Colburn um, when I received this data to confirm that all of the readings then are indicating that the systems are emitting the ions uh, as designed. Uh, but again, I'll assemble this, uh, the raw data information into a table for you um, with any information that uh, is needed to understand what those metrics represent, um, post it for our public and of course send it to you all. But uh, the good news is, is that, that those systems as installed, um, according to their testing today, are emitting the ions as designed. Thank you, Dr. Benson. Any questions for Dr. Benson? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Dr. Benson, um, I drove by um, King George Elementary and it appeared that they were working on the mechanical system there. Did we get new systems or what were they doing? That is actually a CIP item from a couple years ago, but we are getting a new roof That's on new roof. King George Elementary School. Okay, yeah. They just had all of the mechanical systems covered in plastic. So I wasn't sure if they were new mechanical systems, but or if it was the roof. But it is the roof. It is the roof, awesome. and that is a um, the covering of those was was relatively temporary, I guess, when you saw it. But that was to ensure that any materials they're using um, to to affix the roof or the membrane that type of thing are not drawn in by the uh, uh, the systems. But again, those are temporary measures while they're doing that, and that will be, of course, undone when they finish with that. Thank you. Hi, Ms. Hawk, any questions? No. Dr. Cutright? No, ma'am. Mr. Collins? So Honeywell, I thought, was going to come here and explain to us their 99.9% efficiency of not anybody contracting COVID or killing the COVID virus in the schools. They didn't mind 
coming and asking for the 747,000. They can't come and explain to us. I'm happy to invite Honeywell here. Uh, the feedback I got or the directive I got from that board meeting, and again, I apologize I wasn't here when it was requested, was that you were interested in the data, but you you weren't interested in necessarily a presentation from Honeywell. You wanted that data provided by me. And if I misunderstood that, my apologies, but I'm happy to invite Honeywell to come to a future board meeting for you. So Mr. Collins, um, so they presented, yes, when they were, you know, offering the system to us, they presented the performance, you know, the performance as was expected by the system. I'm not sure specifically what information they're going to be able to provide you. Like what, what specifically do you want? Do you want them to tell it like? So I, I think I mean, what we were expecting is that the information that Dr. Benson got today would be presented to us and explained to us in the board meeting, I think is what the impression was, at okay. least on my part, that was my impression, but I, I'm happy to, re to receive the information. And if we have questions, then maybe we can ask for a representative from Honeywell to come. Sure. And I know they'd be happy to come um, and explain the information they've gathered for you. And again, my apology if I, if I misunderstood the directive, but that's the way I understood it is you wanted that information, but you didn't necessarily want a presentation. Mr. Collins, would you like for us to go ahead and seek to have a representative from Honeywell come and present that information, or would you like to review it, and if we have questions, ask for them to come and explain it to us? Whichever you prefer. <laughs> well, Mr. Mr. Collins, you were the one that wanted them to come and explain things, so. Yeah, I did. I asked for them to come last time, and they're not here. So I guess I'll ask for them to come again. Okay, so sounds like Dr. Benson, perhaps we could reach out to Honeywell, find a date, um, I guess, in the, they want, we have three more meetings after this, before the end of the year, would that be acceptable? Potentially at our next meeting, if at all possible, to explain more about the results that they got from testing our systems? Is that amenable to everyone? Yes. That'd be fine. Okay, all right. All right, so now we have our superintendent's report. Dr. Benson, do you have anything else you'd like to share this evening? I do. Um, want to remind um, our community, I want to thank um, many folks and, and staff members in this board I know um, have or will soon participate in focus groups. And we are um, looking at our, our next five-year strategic plan There'll be an opportunity for all stakeholders uh, to access a survey um, for, to provide input into that process. But we're excited about um, data being gathered, qualitative data being gathered right now through focus groups and through stakeholder surveys. Um, and I appreciate everybody's participation in that process. It will only yield a much stronger strategic plan uh, the more voices that can be included in that process. Um, I also want to thank everybody who um, made the Fall Festival a fun time, uh, enjoyed uh, pulling our float, so to speak, first time I think we've had a float, but enjoyed pulling that and celebrating with our community um, an annual tradition that I'm very glad is back uh, after a year off. And um, I hope everybody enjoyed, I'm sure everybody enjoyed the candy um, tossed it gently their way by our school board members. She did a fabulous job. And just a personal note, uh, I thank the school board from my wife. She received a very generous uh, uh, personal expression as far as the flowers, thanking her for her part in making our float a success. And she wanted to pass along her gratitude. It was a nice surprise today and she appreciates that. Appreciate that very much. Um, wanted to, uh, to kind of build on, on something and thank Ms. Higgins. She's been working um, diligently to uh, to uh, kindle or rekindle, I guess, our volunteer program. I understand that she has more than 20 applicants already. Uh, we already have nine who have been uh, vetted, cleared as far as uh, background checks and trained and are actually in our schools, uh, which is fantastic to have that extra help. Uh, and we greatly appreciate those folks. Um, and lastly, um, I'll be leaving Sunday for Charlottesville to join other superintendents in state meetings. It's at those meetings that we typically 
uh, are afforded information as far as forecasts for budget, um, general financial forecasts of the state, um, and we also participate in, in professional development activities that uh, help us to come back to our divisions and then lead the budget development process as we move into uh, early next year. It's hard to believe, but uh, we're here. So uh, I will be there Sunday through Tuesday uh, midday and then be returning Tuesday afternoon. That's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, Dr. Benson. So this time we'll conclude with our board comments. Ms. Pansiera. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of bummed that all the um, bus drivers are gone because, uh, you know, I just wanted to let them know that, um, you know, I think they have a really hard job and I know that uh, the bus driver I had growing up through, through was the same bus driver through kindergarten all through high school, and I can't remember her name, but I think she was the most impressionable person in my um, childhood education. And um, you know they have a hard job; they they get picked on a lot. And um, you know I just think that uh, they need to be appreciated a little bit more. So I wanted to to be able to do that. But um, hopefully by have, giving them a raise, that that will. Uh, show a little bit of appreciation. Um, also, I just wanna thank Ms. Yazerski and um, Ms. Higgins for all your hard work. I know that it's been hard. We've asked, tasked you guys with some pretty tough things here the last few months and beginning of school and getting all this done, but I, I think that's gonna prove that it's gonna pay off for everybody, so I appreciate that um, as well. Um, Dr. Benson, uh, you know, I'm glad to have you back. I'm, I know you've been going through a lot of things. Just wanna let you know, we're in, you're in my prayers and, um, you know, thanks for everything that you've done. And this past Saturday, uh, participating in the parade, it was a lot of fun. I am, um, I only ate four pieces, I swear. And I think I hit at least that many kids in the head, but, um, it was a lot of fun and, um, I am going to miss, uh, not doing that again, but glad that we had the opportunity to do that. So I think that's it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pensiera. Ms. Hawk. Um, I, I want to reiterate my thanks. Uh, I hope the bus drivers will tune back in and uh, hear that we appreciated them being here tonight, uh, but we appreciate them uh, more, more than we can ever express. Um, and I, I think we need to be continuously aware of, of all the support positions um, because each each role in the system is so important. And um, I know, and we've said many times that uh, sometimes the person who uh, has perhaps a, a small role to play in the larger division impacts more children in the long run than, than some of the more influential positions. Um, I want to say thank you to Ms. Yazerski, especially and her staff. Uh, wow, I, I, I think what we've what you have accomplished on our behalf has been amazing. And um, I, who would have thought <laughs> that that we'd be at a better position now? I know we have a long way to go. I, I do, but I, I think this is this is. Great progress, and Ms. Higgins. Wow, you are you are just stepping in and stepping up, and this is exciting. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hawk. Dr. Cartwright. I have had the honor to visit three schools just recently, and I might add, even though we have challenges with the pandemic, we have some wonderful teachers and staff in this school division. I'd like to say that I've seen a positive school climate in all three schools, King George High School, King George Middle School, and King George Elementary School. All the schools are orderly and clean. Uh, the staff and, and uh, teachers are engaged with students. And I just say, the job well done. I'm, I'm very proud to be part of this county and to be your school board member. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Collins. Well, I'm not gonna reiterate what everyone said. Uh, I also also give thanks. Um, the $18,000 digital meeting uh, media um, um, campaign for six months is not an unreasonable amount of money. And I think you'll see that it will um, 
give you results that you'd really be surprised at. So I ask you all to consider that next time we're, we meet, and if we get on it that often, off to go. That's it, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Collins. So I also won't repeat everything that's been said, but I'm very proud of this board for approving the pay increases that we did this evening um, and the step increases for our employees. So I think, I think that's the very least we can do to say thank you to all the hardworking staff that we have. Um, so I just wanna say thank you to everyone for coming together and making that work. And thank you, Dr. Benson, um, for pulling all of that together for us. And I also thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to represent the school board in the fall festival parade. Um, I think next year we'll have to be more strategic with our candy distribution. And I definitely ate more than four pieces of candy. So there you have it. All right. At this time, do we have a motion to move into closed session? Pursuant to state code section 2.23711, A.1 for the purpose of discussion, Dr. consideration Petter. of prospective candidates. Dr. Petter, can we do a revised one? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the one on, on my agenda. Mm -hmm. Pursuant to the state code section 2.23711, Point A1, for the purpose of discussion, consideration of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, substitute stipends, resignation and retirement of employees of the school board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In favor with aye. We're now in closed session.
Motion to return to open session. I move that the King George County School Board return to open session and certify that pursuant to state code 2.2-3712.D, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements under this chapter, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened, were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the public body. Second, Second. To certify. Certify. Dr. Curry, do you certify? Certify. Certify. All in favor? Aye. Your votes aye. We're now in open session. We have a motion to approve the action resulting from closed session. I'll make a motion that we approve um, personnel. What was personnel as presented? Personnel and, and uh, stipends as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are now adjourned.